Hi everyone, it's Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. Today I am crossing something off of my card making bucket list and that is creating this Halloween postage collage. I picked up this stencil right when it was released and I am a huge fan of creating Halloween cards so I couldn't wait to play with this. Here's a look at the main supplies that I pulled out that I thought I would be using together. I have that spectacular mini stamp set, the postage collage stencil, and then also the postage collage. Now this, I already went ahead and pre-die cut out of white cardstock. It is for the A2 size card front. Then I have that Halloween stencil and the stamp set. There are going to be a few other supplies that I realize I needed as I go along, but I will have everything linked below in my video description and also over on my blog. So I'm going to start off by doing my stenciling. So again, I had die cut that A um, A2 size postage collage out of hammer mill cardstock. I'm placing it on top of my grip mat, and then I'm placing the first layer of the spoo spooktacular collage over the top. This first layer actually gives us the background for all of the images. And I think this is one of one of the reasons that I love creating Halloween cards is because I can get really spooky and dramatic with my backgrounds. It just really plays into it. And I really love these images. They're not too creepy crawly, uh, just kind of some really fun images. So I used a small blending brush and I started out by applying powder blue. Now it looks kind of dark here at the moment, but it does lighten up as it dries. And I also think I had some residual ink on my blending tool, but it's all going to work out. I'm coming in next with blue denim. All of these inks, or I should say most of these inks are from Gina K Designs. Now with this darker color, I'm going around the edges of each of those uh, squares or rectangles. So I'm making sure to have the center of each of those sections kind of be highlighted a little bit to really draw your eye into those images and make them stand out. Now this is still the first layer of the stencil. I'm coming in now with, uh, I think this was a black onyx from Gina K Designs. Again, going around just all of those outer edges. And this time I grabbed a mini, I think they're actually called detail blending brushes. So I'm finally pulling away the first layer of the stencil and that is my creepy backgrounds, which I love how that turned out. Now I'm bringing in the second layer of the stencil and this one I am going to kind of use various colors throughout. I started out with a light yellow for my moon, which was lemon drop. And then I'm going to come in with wild dandelion to add a little bit of that darker color more towards the back of the moon. So I really like doing this, adding a lot of detail to my stencils, kind of customizing each layer. To me, it is very therapeutic. And having some small brushes like this, the detail brushes, really, really help with that. Now I'm bringing in some innocent pink for the cheeks for my ghosts. And then I needed to have a color for that puff of smoke that is coming up from my cauldron. And I... I knew I wanted to go purple and I was going to try and do that whole highlight thing. I started out with a really light purple and I think this was like a light lilac. But once I started blending it, it was just almost too light. Uh, the shade just was, really wasn't what I was going for. So I'm going to put this one back and I'm going to grab more of a purple purple, which in this case is a wild lilac. So this one really is that Halloween purple feel to it. I'm going to add that with my mini blending brush. So I am using two different types of blending brushes. These with the ovals are mini blending brushes. They kind of have that oval head to them. And then the smaller ones are detail blending brushes. I'm also adding that purple to the wings for my moth. And then I'm going to bring in cobblestone. Now this is from Concord and Ninth. I really like their shades of gray that they have. So I'm using cobblestone for the stem of the mushrooms. Now I can peel up this second layer of the stencil. Looking great, loving the layers. And I'm going to bring in the third layer. Now there are some etched lines on these stencils if you're not familiar with them that help you align your stencil up with the uh, kind of die cut area on your cardstock. 
So I am adding shading to the ghosts. I did it to the cauldron and then also to my mushroom and the little skull head is going to add shadow. And I did that with mushroom ink from, from Concord and Ninth. Now I'm bringing in edible eggplant for some darker areas on my moth. And notice for most of these, I am using my mini ink cubes. They come in super handy. They take up less room on my desk. I don't need a big ink pad for this. Uh, because they're such small areas and I have a small br small brush. I tell you, I am tongue-tied tonight as I'm doing this voiceover. I think my brain is moving faster than my mouth can. Now I'm bringing in this last layer of the stencil. This is going to add in the bat, the rest of the cauldron, uh, the ghost face, and some pieces for my skull. So I'm doing all of that with black onyx. For the cauldron, since that is kind of a larger area, I kept the darker parts of my ink on the outside of the cauldron and then just went a little more light handed towards the center to add a highlight to the cauldron. And now I'm bringing in some cherry red for my mushrooms. Now for this one, I do also keep kind of my heavier hand of ink on the far right hand side of the mushroom and then get a little bit lighter handed as I get towards the left. So I have a little bit of shading there on the mushrooms as well. So here is the reveal. I love this. I am just so happy with how this turned out. But of course, I need to add splatters to the card. And instead of getting splatters over everything, I went ahead off screen and cleaned off that first layer of the stencil. And I am going to place this back over the top. So I'm putting some post-it tape behind my post-it collage panel. So the sticky side is facing up. And I'm going to line this back up and then just hold it in place with that post-it tape. So for the most part, everything is masked off except for the bat, which I am totally okay with. Now I brought this over to my splat box and I am going to add Distress Mica Stain. I can't remember offhand at the moment what color this was, but I will have it linked down below in the video description. I took some and placed it on my glass work surface, mixed it with just a smidge of water, and then I'm adding the splatters to the background. And I could not resist adding my white. I just love how the white pops off of that dark background. So after I finish all of my splattering, I can set my splat box off on the side and remove the stencil. And now I have these really fun backgrounds to all of those images. Now, sometimes white paint or the splatter that I use for my white can be hard to get off of stencils. So I want to show you what I did. I have a rag here that I use for cleaning my stencils. And I'm actually spritzing on here glass cleaner. Normally, I use rubbing alcohol to clean my stencils, but sometimes things can be just a little bit tough to get off. And so that is where I like to use the glass cleaner and it just literally melts away. Now, some more fun I'm going to have with this card is by stamping on it. So I'm placing my panel after it was dried into my Misty Stamping Tool, which I do have a grip mat in here. And this is this image is coming from the Postage Collage Spooktacular stamp set. Honestly, this stamp I'm doing right now is the whole entire reason I bought that stamp set. I loved how it had that postage kind of feel to it, but it was in a spider web. I just thought that was super cool. So I'm stamping all of these in VersaFine Claire Black Ink. And then I, sometimes the splatter can kind of show through that, but I don't think you can really notice it here in the card. So I'm also grabbing some other images. I needed to run and get my other stamp set. This is, I think this is like their regular postage collage stamp set um, that has the little canceling squiggles on it. Um, I've had that one for a while since it came out too. And I didn't have it on the Spooktacular. So I am combining two stamp sets here to get all of these images stamped on, keeping in mind that my sentiment is probably going to go in the middle. And I love this 31st on here for these scents. I thought that was a really fun idea. So I called that good on all of my stamping. I'm totally loving this. This is just really getting my crafty mojo going. And now for a sentiment, I am going to stamp a happy Halloween. And this is off of an older Honeybee Stamps stamp set. I stamped it in black ink on white cardstock, used the coordinating die to die cut it out, and I'm starting to create my card base. I have a uh, top holding card base here that I'm adding a piece of black cardstock to, so I'm going to have this really nice dramatic background. I don't typically do black uh, for a card front panel, and 
I I kind of think I would have should have left it at that point, but I didn't. I'm going to end up adding another panel to it in just a second. So on the back of my postage collage, I added foam tape. And I'm also going to add the foam tape to the back of the sentiment. That is foam tape from Altenew. So since I was just a little uncomfortable with that black cardstock, I brought in a piece of fog cardstock. I think this is from Spellbinders. And I trimmed it down uh, to about four by five and a quarter because my black panel is four and a quarter by five and a half. So I added my postage collage. Uh, I'm adding my sentiment and I'm lining it up with the margins of the postage collage with the edge of the H and the edge of the end uh, N N <laughs> with the edge of the end to make sure it was straight. Now for embellishments, I am bringing in these cosmic bits from Tailored Expressions. They kind of have like an oil slick look to them, which I thought was really neat to go with my Halloween card. So I pre-planned where I wanted those to go and I am going to add them with my pick and stick tool and my connect glue. And then I do come in and add some little white highlight marks with a gel pen just to kind of give it a little bit more cutesy feel. Now I know Halloween cards are not everybody's jam or you don't have anyone to give them to. It personally is definitely my jam because I just, I think it's a great time to play with all of these dark drastic colors and just really have fun with it. So I got this out of my system. I can cross it off of my card making bucket list for the Halloween season. I hope in the video that you did get some great tips and tricks when creating with your projects. Again, all of the supplies are linked down below in the video description and over on my blog. Thank you all so much for joining me today.